Our final topic in EC111 is really not a course, but it's just an area, biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering is the study of um, electronics and circuits applied to people and animals. So it basically covers everything. Now the objective of this lecture is to take one example of what you do as a biomedical engineer, specifically trying to model the cardiovascular system of a person as an RLC circuit. And in the homework, we'll look at how to, how to predict what happens if different parameters change in that model. The things we'll be looking at in MATLAB are MATLAB scripts, doing nonlinear simulations, and subplot. Now to start out, the cardio cardiovascular system for a person has two different very distinct uh, systems. There's the right ventricle that drives the low pressure system that pumps blood to the lungs. The lungs can't take extremely high pressures, so we need a low pressure system to send blood to the lungs and have it go back to the rest of the body. The left ventricle drives the high pressure system that pumps the blood at high pressure to the rest of the body, providing oxygen to the rest to all, to all your cells. Now, we're going to, to model the cardiovascular system as an electric circuit. In essence, the heart acts like a five watt power supply. Most of the work in medical and uh, most work in medical problems are associated with the high pressure side, the side which requires most of the energy. If you can model the high pressure side of the cardiovascular system as an electric circuit, you'll have a couple of advantages. One, you'll have a better understanding of how the system works. Two, you can build a more accurate model for the body for testing of artificial arts. Three, you can ask what if questions, such as what happens if the capacitance changes, it decreases, uh, what happens if you have a leaky valve, things which are easy to do in simulation, but you know, you start running into problems when you start testing on live animals and people. Fourth, by doing so, that opens up new directions and opportunities for drug treatment. For example, if I can sit there and say the inductance is important or the capacitance is important, I can try to find drugs that affect the capacitance of that model, the inductance of that model, the resistance. It brings up whole new areas of research. So we want to model the cardiovascular system, at least the left ventricle side. There's a couple different models. Uh, two of them we'll talk about in this lecture. The first one is called the two-element Winkessel model. Essentially, it's an RC filter. The left ventricle squeezes and produces or ejects blood to drive the body. There's a valve at the left ventricle which allows blood to flow out but not flow back. The blood then fills up the aorta. It looks like a balloon or a capacitance electrically that fills up with blood. That uh, then squeezes and pushes the blood into the body, which model is a resistance. That's all the capillaries accepting blood. Now, to model this, I need to come up with realistic numbers. Uh, the pressure for the heart is essentially the voltage that we'll be applying. The circuit equivalent is 10.67 volts. Uh, the normal flow of blood is 70 milliliters per second, which we'll model as 70 milliamps, where 1 milliamp means 1 milliliter. And the inertia of the blood is 0.07 kilograms, which we'll model as a 0.07 Henry inductor. Now to tune the circuit, I need to add the capacitance and resistance. The capacitance should be such that it absorbs the flow from the heart and has the pressure go from about 120 to 80 over 1 60th a second for 60 beats per second. Uh, so if the typical blood pressure is 120 over 80, I can model that as just a half rectified sine wave. The valve I'll model as a time varying resistor. If blood is ejecting, the resistance is very low. If blood is trying to go backwards, the valve closes and the resistance is very high. The RA is the resistance to allow nominal blood flow. I've got 13.3 volts, you know, the nominal blood pressure. At 70 milliliters per second, gives me 190 ohms. And the capacitance is just set so that the pressure goes from 120 to 80, or 26 volts to 10.6 volts in one second gives you 4.5 millifarads. That results in the following dynamic model for the heart. The differential equation that describes that circuit 
is the current of the capacitor is C to B dt. That's the current from the uh, left ventricle, current through the diode, minus the blood going through the, to the body. I can write a nonlinear simulation to solve this. The voltage is my heartbeat, modeled as a half rectified sine wave. If blood is ejecting, meaning the pressure inside the ventricle is greater than the body, the valve turns on and becomes 1 ohm. Otherwise, it becomes very large. Um, here it shows 100 kilo ohms. The current through the ventricle is just the pressure drop across the valve divided by the resistance of the valve. The current of the body is the voltage at the capacitor divided by the resistance of the body. The current of the capacitor is whatever is left over. It's the current in minus current out divided by capacitance. I can then do a numerical simulation. If I iterate every one millisecond, time increases every one millisecond, I know the current voltage, the pressure. I know the change in pressure, integrate. I can iterate and say, what is the pressure at all times? If I do that, what it looks like is this. The blue line is the left ventricle pressure. That's the heart beating. That's a half rectified sine wave. The aortic pressure is when the valve closes or valve opens, I, the heart starts pumping into the aorta and the pressure builds up. When the left ventricle pressure drops, the valve closes and the capacitor just discharges across the body. And they have a charge, discharge, charge, discharge. The blood flow is the blood flow through, through the resistor. That's the aortic flow. This is what you have going to the body. That's with the two element one Kissel model. It's simple, reasonably accurate, um, but it does miss a few parameters. I can come up with a more accurate model. This would be the improved one Kessel model. It's a five element model. Here again, I've got the heart being modeled as a voltage source. This provides the pressure to push the blood out. I've got the heart valve that allows blood to flow out, but blocks the blood from flowing back. I've got a capacitance. This is the uh, aorta right at the exit of the heart that stores some blood. I've got a little bit of inductance. The blood has inertia flowing through from the aorta to the rest of the body. This is the main part of the aorta that has some capacitance driving the body. With the improved Winkessel model, some parameters that are fairly reasonable is if I want 70 milliamps of current flow, meaning 70 milliliters per second, I can find C3. C3 should be 10.5 millifarads. Um, if C1 should store 500 milliliters, or if C1 is larger than C3, I'll have one C1 being 1.5 millifarads, or 10 times smaller. The inductance of the blood is 70 milliliters is 0.07 kilograms, which is 0.07 henrys, plus the resistance to help stabilize the simulation. Uh, the resistance of the body stays the same. To draw 70 milliliters of blood at 100 millimeters mercury, I need 190 ohms. And the valve, again, is 1 ohm when the valve is open, 1 mega ohm when the valve is closed. The dynamics for this model then become the current coming out of the left ventricle is just the voltage drop divided by the resistance. For the first capacitor, I equals C dB dt, that's the current in minus current out. The inductance, volts across the inductor, is the voltage at 1 minus I times R minus volts to 3. And the current of the second capacitor, I equals C dB dt, is the current in minus current out. In MATLAB, I can simulate this. This is, again, a very nonlinear system, but with MATLAB, I can simulate that. And at any given instance, I know the voltage that the left ventricle is producing. I can calculate what the resistance the valve is. Is it open or closed? Calculate the current through the valve. And then I can sit there and find what's the change in voltage in the first capacitor, change in voltage across, or change in current through the inductor, change in voltage across the second capacitor, and iterate. When I do that, I get this type of response. Um, the left ventricle is producing a nice, clean, half-rectified sine wave. The aortic pressure, however, has got this little ripple. You actually see that in a heartbeat. This is when the valve closes. The inductance has some inertia. It's trying to pull some negative pressure, keeping the valve open. Um, on the left ventricle flow, 
I have this little backwards flow. When the valve closes, there's a little bit of flow going backwards. That's the blood flowing back into the body um, after the heartbeat, and then it settles out. With this simple model, I'm able to capture some things that you really see. I can see this little hiccup on the heartbeat. I can see some back flow. The power of this model is I can now use it to answer some questions. The questions on the homework, I could ask, well, what happens when you have angina, meaning the aorta expands or the uh, volume of blood increases? I can look at what the effect of hardening the arteries are on this model. I can look at what happens if there's some obstructive flow, or how does the body respond to the above to maintain blood flow. On the homework for this week, what we'll be looking at is what happens if I have different types of valves. Suppose I have a leaky valve so that the resistance isn't that large when the valve closes, some blood flows back. What happens if there's, hyst there's hysteresis? I turn on at one voltage and turn off at a different voltage, meaning that when the valve still opens, it stays open for a while. It takes a certain amount of pressure to close it. When it's closed, it stays closed. It takes a certain amount of pressure to turn it on. How does that affect the system? Those are questions you can ask with a simulation that are very difficult to ask or answer on an actual uh, living subject. And that's one of the powers of circuit simulations. That's one of the powers of MATLAB. I can sit there and analyze the dynamic system. As long as I know the differential equations, I can simulate it. And that should give you enough you need uh, to do the homework for this week. As a wrap-up for EC111, and the point of this course is to, count, to help get you familiar with MATLAB. MATLAB is an extremely useful tool that we use throughout electrical and computer engineering. Also kind of gives you a survey of some of the things to we'll be looking at over the next couple semesters. A recurring theme is that we try to solve n equations and unknowns. A recurring theme is current loops, voltage nodes. With those tools, you can solve almost any problem in electrical engineering. And with that, I'll let you start your homework.